morning, friends. Another week in Ahihik. <laughs> well, a lot of my days start out in the vein of what's on my mind today with reading comments and uh, it entertaining my mind for a while. I worked on a video this week. I was repairing the outside workshop door on my house here in Ajijic, Mexico, and uh, baking cookies. And uh, that was going to be my video today. But I read this comment a few days ago. Um, and the guy sort of challenged me to tell him what was better about Mexico. Um, and I assumed that he meant better than wherever he was. I don't know if that was the United States or Canada or wherever. But what's better about living in Mexico? Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. And I promised in my reply to him that I would think deeply about it. <laughs> well, I thought deeply about it. And of course, the first two things that come to mind are the cost of living and the weather. And I don't want to rub it in about uh, being 110 in Tucson today, but uh, it's a pleasant 74 degrees right here in Ahihik uh, on the north shore of Lake Chapala this morning. And we've been having some pleasant days. The weather, now, it's not fair to compare Tucson to Ahihik. That's not a fair comparison. But throughout the year, I don't have central heat. I've got a small little fireplace I use in a TV room. Uh, I don't have air conditioning. And um, the reason is because we don't need it here. But again, it's not fair to compare here at 5,200 feet above sea level on the north shore of the largest lake in Mexico and the fact that it's one of the most perfect weathers in the world to some place like Yuma or Ahihik or Chicago. Hot in the summertime, Chicago, snow in the winter, we just don't have that. So, but again, it's not fair to make that comparison and say, well, it's better here. But the fact is, it's better here. <laughs> the weather is one of the things that's better. That's not the same for all of Mexico. You live in the Sonoran Desert or you live anywhere near the beach, uh, certain times of the year, the weather's, weather's going to be worse. But here in Ahihik at uh, 5,200 feet on the north shore of Lake Chapala, we have very good weather in terms of the human's body, the human body's um, requirements to be comfortable. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind about better is cost of living. And of course, that comes up all the time. Uh, does it cost less to live in Mexico? And yes, it costs less to live in Mexico. And you've heard me say this many times if you watch my videos, it's not about spending less. It's about getting a greater, better quality of life for the same amount of money because it's human nature to spend what you got unless you're rich. And um, you're pretty much going to keep spending what you spend, but you're going to get more for your money south of the border. You can watch video after video after video about the numbers. Um, and of course, I'm going to do that too. Uh, the big picture is that I'm living on my Social Security, which is not the highest Social Security people get. I was self-employed for years and didn't pay in any more than I had to. And I don't have the highest Social Security of people in the uh, beneficiary, uh, beneficiaries for Social Security in the United States. But in spite of that, for a little less than $2,000 a month, 
I live in a lakefront property with a 3,700 square foot house on a half acre of gardens with a swimming pool and five bathrooms on my social security. And I have a maid and a gardener who comes three days a week. You can't do that on less than $2,000 worth of social security, no matter where you live in the United States. And if I'm wrong, Tell me where. And why is it cheaper? Why is it less expensive? Well, if whether you're a renter or a homeowner, property taxes are a big part of the cost. If you're a tenant, you're a renter, it's passed on from the landlord to you. So property taxes affect you even if you're not a homeowner, but you live somewhere and you rent. My property taxes for rentals that I would, I don't I hate saying this, but I, I, I owned rentals I would not personally feel comfortable living in, not because of their condition, but because of their location and the quality of the house and so on. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to afford better, but um, even houses like that, a little two bedroom, 600 square foot house in Gresham, Oregon, property taxes, $2,800 a year. I lived in a big house that I did love living in. It was uh, 7,000 square foot and I sold it when the property taxes got to $9,000 per year. Here, and a house that's arguably worth between six and seven hundred thousand dollars, and that's not an offer to sell, by the way. My property taxes are about five hundred dollars a year, and that's on two properties because I have two properties here, uh, two deeds. Five hundred dollars a year versus thousands. Well, in the course of a yearly budget on your Social Security, that's a big difference. My water bill. I looked it up. The average water bill in the United States is $864 a year. My water bill here is about $200 a year, U.S. dollars. Garbage. When I own rentals in Portland, Oregon, in Portland, the landlord is required to pay the garbage bills. So I'm very familiar with garbage bills. And I hate waste management, by the way. And since I don't have any more of those rentals and I don't have to pay waste management anymore, uh, I can say I don't like waste management. That's a big uh, garbage service in the United States. My bill was about $40 a month, between $30 and $40 a month for a, a, a small rental house where they picked up a, a small can once a week. The garbage bill here for my house in Ahihik is zero after the property taxes. It's just included in the property taxes, and they pick it up three days a week. So average $360 to $480 a month for my rentals. That's what I used to claim on my uh, Schedule C taxes. Here, zero. Well, what does that mean? It means that if I go out for dinner here in Ahihik and, and get a $15 steak, I don't have to worry about how many times I do that. And a year ago, it was a $10 steak, and inflation is hitting here too. Things have gone up. But that $15 steak is a $30 or $40 steak in the United States, and I would have to worry about how often I went out for it if I lived in the United States year-round. Uh, I have to worry about it when I go live in the United States for a few months in my motorhome. Um, so that's the, that's the big two. What's better in Mexico? The weather and the cost of living. People often cite freedom. And freedom is a personal thing. What's free, what's freedom to me might not be freedom to you. But to me, freedom is living in less of a nanny state. <clears throat> it is the nature of government 
What does govern mean? It means that we're going to make up rules about how you can act or how you can do things. Um, and more often it's rules about how you can't do things. You can't go any faster than that. Or you can't install a toilet without doing that. And, and, and things. Um, Mexico is less of a nanny state. I'm not saying that we don't have rules and regulations and government oversight for things. Um, and I understand that government oversight is for safety and that uh, um, county regulations about how you're going to do your electricity are for the benefit of the and the good of all. But it sure gets tiresome dealing with the bureaucratic BS and what I consider to be the bureaucratic um, scheming to get your money. <laughs> you, you may have some sense that I have some experience with county building codes and have been run through the mill on them. And uh, if you ask, I'll tell you some stories about those things, but... Um, for today, we're just talking about less of a nanny state in uh, Mexico. Um, so we're free to not be controlled so much by the government. I came up with uh, an example. I was looking for an example of that. And I, was just, I happened, to, ha happened upon this the other day. Uh, this is a proposed regulation in the United States for gas stoves. And this was updated March 29th, 2023. The U.S. Department of Energy, the DOE, regulates energy consumption of conventional cooking products, including gas stoves, using the authority under the Energy Policy Conservation Act. And I started to say a moment ago, the nature of government is to make up rules. They never rescind them. We uh, have a big uh, rescinding of a rule in the United States uh, by the Supreme Court a few months ago, but it wasn't a rescinding of a rule. It wasn't the cancellation of a law. It was the rescinding of a right. And that's the difference between making up a law and getting rid of a law. They make up a lot of laws because that's what government does and they never get rid of them. You can go and look at laws that have been on the books for a hundred years that make no sense anymore. Anyway, this isn't an old one. This isn't a hundred year old law. This is a new regulation proposed by the Department of Energy. The first regulation for gas cooktops were, were required by the National Appliance Energy Conservation Act of 1987 and took effect in 1990. These regulations prohibited gas cooking products with constant burning pilot lights. This leads me to think about the, uh, uh, the result of unintended consequences. So it seems really good that if you have a gas stove and it's got a pilot light that's burning all the time, number one, it's using a lot of energy, and that's why the energy conversation did it. But safety people say, well, yeah, if you've got a stove that's burning pilot all the time, you get, a, you get a leak in the pipe that comes to the stove, you're going to have a fire because it leaks out and the pilot light will light it. Well, the unintended consequence is that if you have a pilot light and a gas leak, you're going to burn up half your kitchen. If you don't have a pilot light as a source of ignition and that pipe leaks and leaks and leaks and leaks, and then when you get a source of ignition, it's not gonna burn up half of your kitchen, it's gonna blow up half the block. Law of unintended consequences for what seemed like a good idea. Here's another good idea proposed in February, 2023. If this rule were to be finalized, manufacturers in the United States could not sell gas conventional cooking tops that consume more than 1,204,000 ,004 British thermal units per year. Imagine this unintended consequence. It's late November, you're cooking your turkey, and your gas stove runs out of its allotment of 1,204 ,004 British thermal units, and your oven quits. 
nanny state. <laughs> I'm glad I have a place to live in Mexico. I can burn as much gas in my kitchen as I want. I started by saying that I was answering a comment and saying that I would think deeply about this, and I have thought deeply about it, and here's my number four, and this is my conclusion about why Mexico is better. It's not Mexico at all. It's me. I'm better. I'm more relaxed. I can't wait to get up in the morning earlier, hear the birds. I get out of bed. I walk on the cool tile floors with my bare feet. I come downstairs. I have the Mexican coffee that I love. Life's good. That's the difference. That's what's better. I'm better. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.